Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of On the Rest from Off the Cuff. Today we have a little bit of a battle, of course, between uh, cousins. Uh, Seiko and Orient. Of course, they are related, but uh, many people do have kind of their lineage crossed. A lot of people think Seiko owns Orient. Um, they're actually owned by the same parent company, which would be Epson or Seiko Epson, but it's not Seiko Watch, right? So um, it's uh, different subdivisions that are underneath the same uh, umbrella of ownership but aren't quite, it's not the same as, you know, let's say Lexus versus Toyota by any means, which I feel like a lot of people kind of present that as that's what Orient is. It's kind of like the baby brother of Seiko, um, which they, I would say it's, it's not that clean of a uh, comparison in that regard. Now, looking at these two timepieces, of course, they're both divers. Um, and I thought it would be really nice to kind of compare these pieces because for me, these are uh, actually what I consider kind of the new SKX um, replacement as far as what many people think of. I'm not saying because, of course, there's the 5KX um, the, um, that is out there that if you want that exact uh, watch, but the newest variation of it, then yeah, there's the 5KX. But um, as far as that space in the market as kind of being that fully loaded you know, um, really just true Japanese diver um, at an entry level price point, I think these two are great options. There are cheaper options out there, yes. There are more expensive options out there, yes. Um, but I don't think there are, you know, the there, there aren't too many that are in that real sweet spot where I think there's tons of crossover, um, you know, especially here with the mini turtle being just 42.3 millimeters wide, while uh, the case size on the Kamasu, or, you know, depending on where you're from, some of you might know it as the uh, Mako 3, is only 41.5 in diameter. So with that, you know, I feel like that's a real sweet spot for many people's wrists. And of course, being quite traditional, when you look at them, both, you know, very Japanese, very original designs, um, you know, I think they actually do share a lot in common. So with all that said, let's go ahead, get these pieces in hand and take a closer look. Okay, now one thing to mention is that, of course, the Orient is on strap code uh, Super J. Lewis or Jubilee bracelet. Um, and uh, just so you know, here we actually do have the Mini Turtle on the Mini Turtle bracelet. Although this one doesn't come on this bracelet from the factory um, it can easily be acquired and purchased and put on but uh, honestly these watches aren't too close in price point they're both under 500 bucks um, but with the Orient being uh, slightly e even cheaper uh, depending on where you get it and whatnot and I think the Orient I'd say on paper does offer a touch more value considering that it basically meets um, you know, the Seiko blow for blow, uh, but off also offers a sapphire crystal. Uh, but of course, that's not all, you know, the, the watches aren't just yeah, spec sheets. They definitely are uh, also their own thing. And there's a lot of uh, stuff to discuss as far as, um, you know, their execution as well as their design. And um, of course, their lineage as well. And I think everybody can agree that Seiko is, you know, a considered just a more prestigious brand than Orient. Not that there's anything wrong with Orient. Um, but I mean, even down to the Orient, uh, you know, their their seal there and their logo, it's, you know, it's not the most high-end feeling watch. When I was stationed in Okinawa, honestly, I saw tons of Orient star watches, and I thought they were all just fashion watches um, uh, until I really looked into it. I was like, oh, okay, well, this is actually a pretty cool brand uh, that has... Uh, some some real chops um, but you know at face value this isn't going to necessarily be a watch that's going to be blowing anybody's hair back um, by any means not that this Seiko mini turtle is something that's like you know the the grail of all grails 
but generally people know Seiko, they know it as being slightly more expensive for a department store brand. And then if you're an enthusiast, you definitely know about all of Seiko's, you know, horological, um, you know, feats and, and kind of records and what they've brought to the game of watches, as well as, you know, things that they've also killed, you know, uh, the quartz crisis almost killed the Swiss watch industry because of, you know, a big push from Seiko, um, you know, at the time. So they're quite famous quite infamous um also you know of course seiko is known for their qc issues and whatnot but you know there's a lot of brands known for that so um even american brands right uh, brands like benchmade knife company um have huge uh you know followings of people that are just upset that for the extra money you're not getting uh, extra qc and then you know me i haven't had any problems um with seiko same thing you know with benchmade i've uh, well, I'd say with Benchmade, I've had fewer problems, um, but with Seiko, I've had a couple issues with alignment, and uh, I'd say just pick one up from a dealer where either you can go in and look at it or you can specifically ask for them to send you a picture of the alignment before they ship it. I've got this from uh, Noman Watches. I'll leave a link in the uh, in the video description. And um, I just asked them straight up, hey, can you send me a picture of the alignment uh, just so I can make sure that I'm gonna get one that uh, is within a spec, which, is, which was, you know, the, the way to do it. So when you look at these, uh, you know, very simple, classic layouts you know you, you have the raised indices you have a very nice loom uh you got soup uh you, you get seiko's luma bright uh versus uh, i believe orient uses the uh nami tomo luminova i might be getting that wrong it's been a while um and then you're also gonna get you know very traditional date placement here you're gonna get the day date um framed uh, with the kanji wheel, but you can also have the English. I just keep it on the kanji because it's a little bit more JDM, a little bit more fun, right? Um, here you actually do have the J model, so it does have the made in Japan on the dial, which is another nice little, you know, JDM, Japanese domestic market touch there. Um, the bracelet on here is OEM. This one is, of course, a bit of more of uh, an OEM plus look here. I think it's enhancing and uh, adding to the quality of the feel here. Um, but yeah, they're, they're both really nice watches. They're both very nice blues. They definitely have different approaches. As you can see here, you have the very shifty tony there that you're going to get from a sunray sunburst here you're going to get the matte finished uh, which gives it a lot more of kind of a retro vibe um, almost like a 70s uh, not quite retro blue but um, it just gives you a little bit brighter when it is getting hit by these you know really bright studio lights but in actuality the the blue is, is much darker um, but I will say that in direct light, it does have a way of kind of lighting up and feeling quite electric, uh, which I enjoy. But yeah, I think these are both definitely great watches to consider under 500 bucks. Here is around uh, 390. Uh, you can get uh, this piece and then around 250, you can get this one. Um, Main difference being Hardlex Crystal um, with a magnifier here, flat sapphire. They both have in-house movements, of course. Um, similar beat rates there, so they're going to be uh, six ticks a second with three hertz versus the four hertz, eight ticks per second. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, Seiko's really known for dive watches and, and kind of what they've done uh, within that community. Orient, not as much, um, but definitely known as a real bang per buck brand um, for sure. And, and really having some super cheap options that have been very comparable to the SKX for many, many, many years. The SKX ends up having a little bit more of lineage and shine, so it ends up taking the prize in most people's hearts versus a Ray or a Mako of a similar spec. And you know, I think that is probably the case here as well. Um, although the Mini Turtle is more of an original take, um, although it does pay tribute to um, you know the the classic tonneau uh, shaped divers of the past, it definitely does something a little bit different. Um, it almost has kind of a Doxa esque vibe to it. Uh, definitely not a, a an homage to Doxa in any way, um, because you know Seiko is hugely known for this case shape um 
but they do a great job kind of refreshing and modernizing here i mean this is honestly just another evolution of kind of your classic uh, orient mako that's been uh, done in so many different iterations and spin-offs there's the ray there's the usa there's usa 2 so there's volumes and chapters of uh orient divers uh in this price range that are quite nice this one being probably one of the more premium ones um i would have put it back on the factory bracelet for the review but honestly i don't even know where that is like that's how trash the factory bracelet is it was like it's in a watch box somewhere and it's not even worth looking for um even for the comparison's sake here and with the price difference it's i think it's more than fine with the extra money you can count that towards putting it on this bracelet although this bracelet did cost a pretty penny uh as well you can buy it from sources from different places i've seen it go for anywhere between 100 bucks to 200 uh bucks so you can get it kind of whatever and then these are closer to basically 80 90 dollars for the strap code um bracelet so with all that said let's actually get them on wrist and kind of get uh some impressions on how they wear although they do have a very similar uh, overall dimension um yeah i think you'll notice also of course here you look at that lug to lug difference is uh, quite dramatic and and also I think the uh, this, the general proportions, although the scale is very similar, the proportions are quite different, which really play with uh, with the way these uh, present themselves. So let's go ahead and get these on wrist. Okay, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, both of these watches were really really nice. Um, the mini turtle quite nice, especially with that short lug to lug, uh, makes it really really wearable. Wraps the wrist nicely. Here you can see, um, you know, with the wider uh, 22 millimeter lugs on here, it definitely has uh, a bit more of a substantial kind of appearance to it and a, and a more traditional silhouette, I'd say. Um, on the Orient, which here, this is definitely more funky and, and true to form for what you'd expect from a Seiko, as you can see with this, those beautiful you know rounded lines so great uh you know as far as your range of motion go on your wrist while you're wearing these i do tend to wear them a little bit looser and uh past the wrist bone uh, closer to the hand some people wear them higher up on the wrist i'm not one of them um so both wear really really well again uh similar as far as you know the experience even when you uh turn this guy here they're both 120 clicks this is very SKX like in the fact that it's just super smooth and the clicks just uh, are, are, are quite as crisp or deliberate as you'd get from uh, another, let's say in a comparison to something like an Oris Aquis, which is very notchy and clicky. This is definitely very much on the super smooth, almost hydraulic side. And then here, similar, but a lot clickier. Quite smooth, but with a click that's a lot more pronounced, which I personally do prefer. The nice thing is you get the fully graduated indexes for uh, 60 uh, minutes all the way around on both. So these, I mean, honestly, these are both uh, could be ISO certified, um, the Orient probably isn't because they, I'm assuming they would put Diver on there if it was. Um, uh, versus here, of course, you can see Seiko very proud of their diving lineage, putting a Diver's 200 meters. For you to have the text of actually having Diver's written on the dial, it does have to meet those ISO standards. So uh, this definitely does meet that. You see, although it is a lollipop seconds hand, it is loomed, so you do have the running time feature um, while you're underwater to know that your watch is still running. So on wrist they wear really well uh, of course more of a traditional wear here versus more of kind of a funky wear here but i think you know uh there's something to it uh that makes it a, a bit more fun uh so let's go ahead and actually set up uh some loom shots and some low light transition okay i'll go ahead and hit the lights as you can see the loom is quite outstanding i'd probably give the edge to the seiko 
Um, but honestly, the Mini Turtle is actually a pretty fantastic example of Seiko Loom um, versus Kamasu. I mean, it's it's not. I wouldn't say it's it's their strongest Loom application. Although within kind of the Mako and Ray family, it probably would be. Um, but you know, you go up to the Triton level. Um, and that thing definitely burns like a torch, more similar to what you'd see uh, from Seiko. Now, one thing I like to do in these low light uh, transitions is kind of just to give you a better idea of how these watches uh, really render in uh, either harsher lighting and low lighting. You can see here the higher, the harsher lights there really should be exposing all the imperfections in the finish. Um, but you can see the light rolls over the brushing there pretty nicely and polishing nice and clear. But the nice thing is you actually get an idea of the way the blues render. As you can see, the uh, blue on the Orient definitely is all about the high contrast. The darks with just a sliver of that bright electric blue. Um, and then you're going to get a more of a pure kind of uh, navy blue tone that you're going to get from... Uh, even with some hints of royal, and I think a lot of that just has to do with the way the camera is uh, color correcting. Because uh, in person, I'd say it's definitely closer to, you know, not quite of the traditional turtle reissue uh, navy blue, which I think is a very nice deep dark blue. This definitely is a sh is a touch uh, lighter, but not too much. But oh, you can see how instantly legible these watches are, even in transitional light there, where you're going to get, uh, you know, uh, uh, wash out a little bit and you're getting some also a nice thing you can notice is how well, well and how white everything is as far as that loom when it's not actually uh, glowing so in the daylight you can see uh, it's, it's pretty nice and I think the camera does render that pretty well maybe gives it even of a whiter look than it truly is, or that might just be the little screen, of course, on my camera. But um, let's go ahead, get these back on, and kind of get to some closing thoughts. You know, on the wrist, these things wear really, really well, guys. They're well-tuned, uh, well-sorted. They're both really excellent watches. Um, I think at the end of the day, if you're going to choose between these two, um, it, it really depends, I think, a lot on kind of the perception of the brands. Because I think... Um, you know, you put them side by side, you know, um, and they're, they're both just good. They're great watches, uh, in their own respects. Um, for me from doing this so many times, you know, comparing Seiko divers to Orients and citizen divers, um, at similar specs, uh, there's just a certain charm that Seiko has with their divers. They're just, they're, a, a Seiko diver is just a lot different than a diver from any other watch, uh, any other watch brand. There's just a certain connotation that is uh, that is tied to dive watches and Seikos. Um, you don't necessarily have that same, and it's not to say that the Orient is any less capable of performing, but it just doesn't have that kind of same magic, right? Uh, you know, when you think of the Seiko Turtle, you think of the SKX, you, you think of, you know, these very iconic timepieces that are really uh, stepping stones and blueprints uh, for so many divers that have come afterwards, um, where, you know, the Orient isn't necessarily trying to do any of that. It's definitely a more traditional route. Um, uh, I think in my collecting, I probably did end up picking up like a Mako before I even bought an SKX because I thought the SKX four o'clock crown was a little funky and I wasn't ready for it. And of course, you guys know now I have like a couple of SKXs that are modded and beautiful. I've dumped a bunch of money into, um, and they're some of my favorite, uh, watches in my collection. Um, so there's something about being ready and falling in love with that funkiness that you get with a Seiko diver um, that you're not necessarily going to get with an Orient. And you might not want that. You might want something that is more, um, you know, you could compare this Orient to, let's say, a Tag Heuer. Um, and it's going to compare super favorably to, to something like that because, uh, you know, the Aqua Divers aren't really known for any special case finishing or anything like that. They have plastic movement, uh, you know, uh, rings and everything like that. 
uh you know they're not in house so there's just a bunch of things where like on paper the orient is is a really great watch to compare to any other watch on paper for the money it's it's really nice um I like the Kamasu because it does have certain levels of improvements over your typical Mako and Ray that you would normally have to kind of mod your way up to. Um, so I think out of kind of uh, that, even in comparison to the uh, Mako USA, which was a great watch, the, the main thing I think is the advantage for the Kamasu is that it has the protected loom pip. So the loom pip actually does have a layer of uh, crystal over it. Um, you know, similar to what Seiko does, as, as you can see here, the, um, the mini turtle has that too, which is great offers protection in the past. That's one of like my dings about, uh, Orient divers is that the exposed loom pip actually gets stained pretty easily and can chip pretty easily. Uh, here it's protected, which is great. And then you're also getting, um, Sapphire, which is wonderful because the mineral, uh, crystal that is in your typical, um, lower end orient actually is quite prone to chipping and scratching uh, for me though with the mineral hard lex that is on seiko's they've actually been very resilient and i've never even noticed a scratch on any of my seiko's with hard lex so i mean and, and, and you know i wear them a lot so i i that's my experience you guys might say hey well my hard lex scratched on day one well it hasn't happened for me yet um so it's nice to have sapphire don't get me wrong but i think uh if i had to choose another one like what would be second place to sapphire it'd be hard lex and I, it wouldn't be just any old you know i'd say i'd take that over even some of those weird sapphire coated um <laughs> uh minerals that are out there that like invicta is known for and all that but god this video is running long guys so some of you were like man this was unfair he was like leaning on the seiko the whole time anyways seiko fanboy he's okay paying 600 bucks for the new alpinist bah whatever um yeah i mean at the end of the day the watch that i like more and wear more is the seiko i feel better wearing it i i get more excited when somebody sees this watch on my wrist versus the other watch. Uh, I think when somebody notices an Orient, which actually no one has ever noticed an Orient on my wrist um, and has ever thought any more than, you know, that's a cool blue watch or a cool dive watch. Um, there's just so much more, um, you know, I guess more to geek out about for Seiko just because uh, Seiko brand just holds so much more water. And I think it's a good example of how branding can be a huge part of the value proposition. Um, you know, as much as everybody wants to say that, uh, you know, a Rolex Submariner, a modern Rolex Sub should be an $1,800 watch. I mean, it's not. <laughs> um, you know, as much as somebody wants to say that the Zen uh, 556 should be an $800 watch. It's not. You pay more and there's a reason for it. Um, and I think that's uh, the case you get with Seiko. You pay a little bit more um, for the brand as well um, than you do with Orient. I think Orient is a great bang per buck and it's great on paper and it's great on wrist too. But I just, for my wrists, I do prefer the Mini Turtle. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks guys.